Hey guys, it's Jason with your Hopium Free Crypto channel. Today we're going to look at my crypto investing strategy for the Bitcoin bull market. So I'm looking at planning and altcoin price updates. I'm attempting to look at about 52 altcoins in this video. So I may split it up into two videos, which is why you might see it in part one and part two. The second part will be the remainder of the altcoins. This first part is explaining my strategy, explaining my thoughts around the bull market, whether we're seeing some early signs to a bear market or not and then going into specific reasons for that. I'm bringing this up because I think it's about time I do a full recap of what I've covered on the channel over the last about five months. The other pieces to the puzzle are with recent videos, I'm talking about signs of a Bitcoin bull or bear, but I'm looking at it in terms of short and long term. So long term, I'm bullish. Short term, I'm st I still have question marks around the price of Bitcoin, which is what I want to briefly ex explain in the beginning of this video and then look at the other 52 or so cryptocurrencies and a very quick fire run through of what I see with those coins, uh, obviously from the charts. That's as fast as we can do it. So with that said, if you can hit the subscribe button, bell notification icon, the scammers are now gone. I have losing in a service to remove the scam comments. So about 99% of those are gone. That's why you don't see them down there anymore. And of course, like up the video. It goes a long way to helping out the channel and it supports the work that I'm doing here. So what we'll discuss and the reasons why. BTC, Ethereum, crypto investing roadmap. So I want to cover the majors and what I see moving forward just for the majors and then get into the details. My spe specific crypto strategy checklist, thoughts on as I get thousands of those questions on individual altcoins. So I'm attempting 52, as I've said, probably get about 10 or 20 in this video. And then the preceding video, probably about 20 or 30 in that as well. Let's begin with my specific crypto strategy checklist. I've covered this in previous videos on the channel. You can see it under a playlist, which is for Bitcoin for beginners. That's what it's titled. So my crypto strategy is based on these pieces here. This is the main thing I want to mention is this is all going to be different for everyone. So do not attempt to just buy and sell whatever it is I am. You need to have your own ideas of how you trade or invest. So entry levels, this is what I'm taking into account is the entry levels that I entered compared to what you guys entered. So I'm entering at particular levels earlier on 2020, 2019. It's going to be different for everyone. Cash invested, my amounts are going to be different from yours. Current returns, obviously because I got in at different times to you, my current returns are going to be different uh, to yours. And you might have got in earlier and your returns might be even better. My goal, I want to get around 10 to 20x minimum on my long term holds. And I'll have a look at my major holds in just a moment. So that's about approximately about a thousand to two thousand percent return. At the moment, because we're in some uh, mid stage of the bull market, maybe a little bit later in the game, we'll see after it plays out. A lot of people are kind of looking for a hundred percent or two hundred percent. But getting in during the bear market, you want to get into the thousands of a percent. And that's why I was buying in the bear market. Thoughts on timeframes remaining. I mentioned this a few times. Some people believe this could go on forever. I do not believe it'll go on forever. My timeframes I've mentioned, and I'll have a recap of them for Bitcoin and Ethereum, somewhere around later this year or 2022. Risk tolerance. That's going to be different for everyone. My risk tolerance for how much I'm willing to accept a price drop is very different to a lot of people online because I can see it from the comments. They get triggered and they can't hack, hack about a 10 or 15 percent drop, whereas I've experienced 40 percent, 50 percent, 80 percent drops on some things. But for the major holds, I have a specific risk tolerance that I am comfortable with. As I said, these are all going to be different for every person. I need to make all of this clear at the beginning because it's going to be different. All right, reminders about my portfolio. Major projects are Ethereum. It's no surprise to anyone. Ethereum, Bitcoin, Link. I talk about DOT a lot. I've talked about Solana a lot, which is another big hold. Zen, I don't talk about that often because I was really surprised that it actually took over my portfolio. It was something that I believed in in 2017 and it's just gone absolutely nuts. So it's taken over some of my portfolio and I've been selling that off. CRO, you guys know I talk about that a lot, and I think this is going to be a slower gaining cryptocurrency, but it has spikes here and there. And Zillica at the moment, because it's been gaining slowly and quietly, it's been creeping its way up into uh, my major projects in my portfolio. 
Speculating on small caps. I talk about small caps on the channel. I've talked about Poker City, things like GODB. These are not major parts of my portfolio. So when they go down by 40, 50%, 80% against Ethereum value, I don't really care. Other people, it affects them and it affects them mentally, emotionally, and it drains them and it doesn't make them great investors or traders. It takes away from what they can do. I've said here, I'm using about one to 2% max of my portfolio. That's why it doesn't bother me. If it drops, big deal. I put in 1%, okay, it's worth half a percent. It doesn't, it doesn't bother me. The upside is far greater than the downside, which is why we're in cryptocurrency for the asymmetric risk. Again, I need to make that really clear. I'll, I'll buy and sell at my discretion without notice or update. So just because I'm talking about 50 plus cryptos at the moment doesn't mean I'll update any of these at any time. But I want to give an update on all of them at the moment. Don't base your plan on how I plan to invest now and moving forward. So make sure you go through and check out those videos I have on the channel. Uh, you can set yourself up because there's a lot of questions that I offer you there and that you can then create your own plan with. And so if you haven't set that up, then everything just becomes a little bit confusing. So definitely create some clarity in your investing. Now, because this video will probably be a little long, I have a lot of this data in previous videos. So I'm not gonna recap it all in detail. I will talk about it just so we've got a understanding of what we're looking at moving forward. Bitcoin, my short term outlook is uncertain. I'm not buying. My long term is very bullish. I've explained this many, many times but I'm not buying until X occurs. And you've seen on my chart and I've posted on YouTube community posts, 60,500 is the bullish target that I'm looking for in Bitcoin. Bitcoin is looking reasonably good today. Yesterday, not so much. It crashed through 56K. Now it's recovered. So there's that uncertainty, which is what I'm seeing in the short term, which is what I talked about weeks ago for reasons that I mentioned in the videos. So long term, definitely bullish. Am I selling? Not yet. I am almost happy to wait until I see a confirmed uh, bear market begin. I want to see something happen in the spike as the market moves up. And if the energy changes as the market begins to turn into a bear market, that's probably where I'll look to sell some. I'm not, I probably won't sell a lot on the way up. Ethereum, basically the same deal. Short term, bullish, except in BTC I was uncertain, whereas Ethereum short term, I'm bullish. The $2,000 low that we had a couple of weeks ago was very bullish for me. So that's why I'm very bullish on uh, Ethereum long to, uh, short term. So, but I'm not buying anymore because of those buys that I had previously. Long term bullish, not buying until X occurs. I want to see some reaccumulation, some consolidation, maybe a pullback, something that gives me a uh, hope or a feeling of certainty that we are going to continue up rather than just shoot straight up and come back down. So I've done my buying. I'm okay with these two. If you're asking me is now a good time to be buying, I'm telling you what I'm doing based on my plan. I don't know what your situation is or whether this is the first time you're ever buying Ethereum. So it's going to depend on all those things and what your risk is. How much are you willing to see it drop from 4,000 US dollars? Are you prepared for it to drop to two and a half thousand uh, and then to see it go to seven or eight thousand? These are the things you need to ask yourself. Am I selling? Not yet. Same deal with Bitcoin. I'm happy to see this thing shoot up because I think Ethereum is really going to go nuts and I want to run that whole thing out and then see it come back some because I think the upside is still a lot more than the downside. Now the juicy part, the altcoins. I'm going to list them off very quickly. I've gone through all of the charts this morning. It's taken me a two, three hours to go through each one and check them off between the USD chart, the BTC chart, the Ethereum chart, just to give myself a stronger view of each of these cryptos. Okay, so I'm going to do about 15 seconds, maybe 10 seconds on each of them to try and get through all of this. And this is essentially my thoughts on. The idea for this is to help you with your exit strategy. It's to, it's to help you with your current investing and it's to help you be a better investor long term, whether it's now in this bull market, where it's through the bear market, and then hopefully you're around for the next bull market. So some notes to point out first. I do not own all of these projects. Just looking at how many I had there, it still is a lot to consider. If I was to have 50 projects, I would not be able to sleep at night. So that's why I don't own all of these, but I like to track them because I'm very interested to see what the rest of the market is doing and then compare that to mine. I advise do your own research on the projects if you consider buying. I'm only looking at the technical analysis here. I'm not looking at anything to do with the fundamentals. I don't know about the particular 
company, or I'm not going. I'm going to assume that I don't know about the company and just look at the charts for these. I'm only reviewing the charts, no fundamentals. When I've got risky, so I'm labeling each of the cryptos in different words. If I say risky, it doesn't mean I think the thing's going to crash. This is just a word for the volatility will be high. So something might have been shot up already, something like uh, Solana or I think it was Harmony One. But these sort of things have shot up very high and I would label them risky because I'm not sure whether we're going to see big crashes or it's consolidating at those high levels. It's on shaky ground at the top. So all I'm saying here is expect wild fluctuations in price. Generally speaking, I'll have a look in this a sec. Generally speaking, Outlook is longer than one to two weeks. This is a big thing that I see in the comments. People will be talking about, well, that worked out well, or that didn't work out well. Cardano worked out very well. You know, I was looking at a breakout of the $1.50, 55 level, and it happened within a few hours. That isn't always the case. And if I'm looking for a consolidation period or a period to buy and accumulate a, a cryptocurrency, I'm not expecting it to happen in the next hour or two. I'm prepared to wait weeks. Case example is uh, the graph. The graph has taken weeks. TVK has taken weeks. I'm not expecting it to be tomorrow or the next hour. If I have to wait months, I will wait months. I've done that for Ethereum. I've done that for BTC. I've done that for Zen. The list goes on. And the results I've seen are fantastic. And you can see it on my Instagram. You can follow that. Link is down below. My super fund portfolio, super, my self-managed super fund, SMSF, or for guys outside of Australia, your retirement fund. That's what we call it here. That has been my retirement fund. $26,000 last year that about the average price average getting in time frame although i did enter 2017 i've had a few uh, different changes within the super fund over that period and so that's the price that, and the time frame that i've started it from around 26k it's currently about 350 grand i'm quite happy with that if you're expecting thousand x returns maybe this isn't a channel for you all right eth has crushed it some other things to note ETH has absolutely crushed it in the last month or so, and that is going to affect some of the cryptocurrencies and how they look against Ethereum. End of the day, it would have been better just to sell everything and throw it all into Ethereum. But we're playing with a game of probabilities and risk and reward, and you just don't know what is going to happen. That's why we spread out our risk across other cryptos, which we think will do well. Often opportunities require work to find them. Bull markets, crowds expect it to be easy. Definitely notice that. People think that they can buy anything and it's going to go up. I don't see that to be the case all the time. It depends on what timing you're going to get into these projects. And I'm treating this a little bit lightly, but definitely in a bull market, there's a lot of new people in here and they believe that opportunities will just be absolutely everywhere all the time. And although in a bull market, they are everywhere, things change, especially between cycles within a bull market. So NFTs are on the decline. Other areas, sectors of the crypto space are on the incline. That's just the way it works. Weak positions, I may drop to conserve time and energy. So I've gone through a few cryptos and I'm thinking, all right, I have too many. I'm happy to sell a few because it's going to save me time and energy. And if you think that's going to work for your portfolio, use it. All right, keep an eye on my alerts on the right hand side. They're little orange triangles on the chart. They are my alert areas for areas where I think they will find some uh, support. And if we don't find support, then it basically changes my, my view of the market. If we start to break through support levels, then I think, all right, maybe I want to get out of some of the position, all of the position. Like I said earlier, I will have my own up here, my own discretion without notice or updates. I'm just giving you warnings there, but you can see on the right-hand side where I have my alerts. Altcoins will depend on Bitcoin, steady decline or fast drop. So Bitcoin is dropping hard and fast. Pretty much everything is going to be affected. If it is slowly declining, then I've noticed the market can sustain that and the alt season will, will continue and we'll start to see a lot of money flow into some of the alts, which we've seen with the Bitcoin dominance absolutely get crushed. We've covered that for months uh, based on other technicals. Accumulation, consolidation, the same. If I'm calling something accumulation or consolidation, it's the same. I get that question a lot. And this is quick fire. I know I've spent about 10 or 15 minutes getting through all of the intro, but I think this is important to explain what it is I'm going to be looking at in uh, a moment. Uh, this will be the ground and the basis for the second video as well. So just keep that in mind. Now, I'm going to look at the shitcoin uh, charts and the total two, the altcoins. At the moment, they look risky parabolic or crash. So I think they have the potential to go parabolic now, get a massive altcoin season. 
or if they fail at their resistance levels, then it will probably mean a decent crash. Tons of money can be made and lost. Emotions will be extreme. So I'm bringing this up now because it's very different to uh, last year, say mid 2020, when we didn't have these extremes in the emotion. It was just dull and boring. That's the time to be buying so that we can ride it up. Now we're in the extreme emotion stage. And so if we don't get the outcomes that people are looking for, then it can go the opposite direction just as hard or fast. So if we don't get that big breakout that everyone's expecting, people fear for their lives, fear for their money, and they, they cash out really quickly. That's the stage that we're in. And it's going to get worse as the market moves into the later stages of the bull market. The only thing that can hold this up, in my opinion, is if we get a solid correction, start that accumulation phase again, and then we move on to the next leg of the bull market. However, like I've pointed out many times before, if Bitcoin continues up, breaks out 60,000 level, I think we're probably going to head up into new all-time highs again. And that will probably set off some more parabolic moves, some more altcoins or uh, altcoin season. But obviously, we'll see some of that drip into the Bitcoin prices as well because everyone is sort of clearing out of some of their alts into Bitcoin. So it's going to get crazy. By the looks of it, we'll get through at least 10 cryptos in this video, and then I'll save the others for parts two, maybe part three. Right now, I've got these 10 that we'll have a look at, but first I want to check off these charts here. These are great things to have a look at. It's from uh, Secrets of Crypto, talking about how the dumb money trades compared to how the smart money trades. They have a plan. This is often what we see looking at the comments sections. All you have to do is look at what people are hashtagging in the comments, go and check this out. I'm 100% sure they don't watch the video. They come onto every video and they start spamming the video with the coins that are pumping or have already pumped. And so what happens is they'll buy these pumps, buy the top, they'll buy the dip, and then they'll continue to buy the dip on the wrong side of it. And then they'll, if they happen to stay in the market, they'll buy the dip as it starts to move up again. So they'll buy the peak, then they'll sell the dip because they're impatient. And this might be a few months before it takes off again. And then they, the cycle repeats. This is for the dumb money. Smart money, plan, buying at these lows. This is what I'm looking at when it comes to TVK, when it comes to uh, GRT, so the graph. The graph might even be in this position here, but because we're in a long-term bull market, I think maybe we're in this section here. We've had a pump and now we're just sliding, sliding, sliding into these little low buy areas, but this can take months. And that's what I'm looking to do here is buy more graph in those areas. That's what I did with Link, Link versus BTC. It was dying, 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 dying. and we looked at it on the channel, was buying up link here. So keep this in mind, go and check out Secrets of Crypto and then look at these plans that they have over there to explain what it is that we're looking for in altcoin season, how to set up a plan, how to trade the markets. It's really helpful stuff. This is the piece that I put up yesterday looking at is now signs of the end of the bull market. And if anyone watched it, they'll probably understand that I don't think it's the end of the bull market, but I'm looking at these phases, phase three, phase four, which is also what this uh, Twitter account has mentioned, is Ethereum's outperforming Bitcoin, large caps are going parabolic, the old stuff is also going parabolic, memes are everywhere, stuff that doesn't even have a use anymore like Ethereum Classic and EOS. I don't, I don't hate the people or the projects or the ideas, it's just what I have done in my research. I don't see them doing much long term could be wrong, but this is why I'm seeing between this phase three and phase four. And then potentially we cycle back around into Bitcoin. And so if Bitcoin has another few weeks in its trending sideways range. Uh, then we can see a lot of that uh, altcoin gains cycle back into Bitcoin. And then we start that leg of Bitcoin again. All the alts start to bleed against their Bitcoin value. And then we start the cycle again, because that's why I think we're in a longer term bull market, because I don't think we've gone through this enough times just yet. As I said, could be wrong, but I'm definitely keeping this uh, as something to watch. Now, as a reference, we're looking at the market cap here. It's 2.5 trillion with Bitcoin at 1.1 trillion. The total market cap at the end of this bull market, what do you think it could be? Could it be 6 trillion, 7 trillion, 8, 9, 10, 12? What, how many trillion could it be? And when I look at that, I think, how much more does Bitcoin have in it? Can it get to 200K, get us to around... A three trillion dollar market cap, in which case we're probably closer to around that eight or nine, seven, eight, nine, ten trillion dollar market cap, seeing as Ethereum might be at one, one and a half trillion, and maybe even two trillion. And then we just start our uh, work our way down the cryptocurrencies here to be hundreds of billions of dollars. And so that's why I think 
although it's not early in the bull market, I don't think anyone can really think that is. Well, actually, there are a lot of people that actually do think it is early in the bull market because they believe 100% of the world has to buy big, uh, cryptocurrency until it's over, which is completely incorrect. The first, well, 2017 bull market, it was like 0.1% of people had cryptocurrency and we still had an 85, 90% crash. This time around, maybe we get 2% of the population that purchase cryptocurrency and then we have the crash and that 2% might take us to $8 trillion. These are all the things that I'm weighing up when I'm looking at uh, total market cap and then looking at where I believe we're positioned in the bull market overall. How much time do we have left? So that's just a quick look at the market caps and a th having a bit of a thought around how far we have to go. Next piece is I'm looking at the shitcoin indexes. This, These are all the cryptos that are in the shitcoin perp. There's a lot of them there. So if you want, check that out. It's on the FTX Help website. Now, let's cross over to the charts and get through the first 10 for this video. And I'll put the rest of the altcoins in another video. So stick, uh, stay tuned for that. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Bell notification icon. Like the video up if you found some value from this content in helping you decipher, or at least from my opinion, where I think we are and what I'm going to do moving forward. Let's first take a look at the shitcoin index, the shit perp on FTX exchange. Now I've got my three data points, one, two, and this third section through the middle here. We recently had the fall in April from that top. We kept trying to break above it and we haven't broken above this resistance level. Now this is on a log chart, you can see down here. If we bring it back to linear, then it's completely different. But the log is what we're looking for because we want those parabolic moves. So if we can make it up to this line again and break through, things are going to go absolutely wild. From this point to the uh, the resistance line already, we're looking for about 30, 40%. So it can still be a pretty decent altcoin season if we get that. But if we can break through and hit somewhere further up in the 20s, 30,000, that would be absolutely phenomenal in altcoins. The other chart I want to have a look at is total two. Total two is doing something similar. We can see it's just trending across the logarithmic resistance one, two, three. This is our fourth attempt. So if we can break this, altcoin season is on hard and fast. Yes, I have been putting out some videos saying, are we seeing signs of a bear market? The point is we may be on an edge of both. If we don't break through, it's going to be bad. If we break through, it's going to be amazing. This is the risk and why I labeled it risky of getting into trades at this end of the cycle. We're not at the beginning, we're not at the end, we're in the middle, but maybe we're closer to the end than we are to the beginning. And that's all the reason that I put down when it comes to risk. You can just see it on a chart. We have come so far from these bottoms of around $40 billion for the altcoins, all the way up to 1.3 or so trillion dollars. Break through this, it is gonna go absolutely nuts. If we don't, then we might be on the sidelines for a little bit longer. So the first look is at one inch and I've got good. I think one inch is looking good. It's on the BTC chart. It also looks all right on the USD chart. So we're hitting you all time highs. As I said, it's a quick fire. So we're gonna get through and look at Aave and ADA. So Aave looks good. BTC looks like it potentially is accumulating. If you remember back to these posts that I had uh, from Secrets, oh, where they go? Here they are, over here. Then just keep an eye on where we are on these charts. Uh, as we go through these. So Aave, looking all right. We've broken through some highs. Aave USD, again, breaking up to some new highs. ADA, you know we've called this pretty well throughout this market, we called this top, looked at the breakout up here. Uh, I thought these were fake outs through here, uh, through the, uh, the $1.40, $1.50 as it was listed on Coinbase and those sort of things. It's been doing us very, very well. And I've got a staking pool that you can find a link to in the description down below if you want to stake your ADA. I'll have some more videos coming up on that if you're unsure how to do it. But there is a link to staking your ADA with the Investor Accelerator staking pool down below. I'm pretty excited. I'll do more videos, as I said. Uh, ADA ETH has been crushed because Ethereum's been doing extremely well. ADA BTC, getting back to this new high. We looked at this as a breakout of BTC. ADA has been uh, serving us very, very well. Algo and API3. Some stuff that we haven't looked at a hell of a lot, but just so you can get an idea of the charts, even if you don't trade them. See here, they're looking okay. Adam is looking good. Algo is looking okay, but it's lagging. If we look at the BTC chart, it's just lagging the rest of the market, but it's starting to make its way up higher lows. That's good. API 3, it's just in a sideways trading potential consolidation, but the volume is quite low. So I'm concerned with that. 
again, it's quite similar. It's pushed to highs, but it just can't sustain those. So it needs some more consolidation, even though the volume is dropping. So I'm not as bullish on these things, as you can see. I just say, okay. Adam, this is good. PTC has begun to break out of these highs. Adam USD has begun to break out of the highs. That looks very good at new all-time highs for Adam, I believe, at around 30 bucks. Yep. Audio, okay, but lagging. BTC, see it's starting to drop. And I think this will probably continue down, looking to hold that 3000 level, but I think this is probably on the way down, just looking at that. USD, same sort of deal, failed at the 50%, probably going a little lower until it can reaccumulate before it can take off again. AVAX, okay, good. BTC chart was what I wanted to have a look at here, is the break above, so that's a good sign for Avalanche, break above these highs from 62,000. AVAX, USD, Avalanche, Again, it's starting to move its way up and getting these higher lows on the way up. Higher highs as well. Nice fake out or nice uh, clean out of these lows and then a strong move away. Badger and Band are our last two to look at in today's video. Badger, BTC. So this one was a little concerning with the day, these two days here. Huge volume and then a rejection. We could just be going through a longer consolidation like we're looking at here. So maybe we're in this section, maybe we're through this section and the smart money We'll be buying up through these lows if we get a bit longer. You can see the, the difference there. Badger USD, kind of similar as well. Big volume on those. And I wanted to look at Band, which has been doing quite well. We've got a good accumulation, and this is against the USD. So highs are getting higher. A little bit of a, a false break, but we're back in the zone here. And then Ban BTC. It's still in this. Look at that. Accumulation. Check this out. What's that? Smart money. Buy, buy, buy. Dumb money is sell, sell, sell. So you'll see that in the comments and people are like, why isn't this doing anything? Why isn't this doing anything? This is the pattern that you want to be seeing if you're looking for something to take off like that. So band is looking all right, but it's about patience because that's been a very long time of not much movement against the BTC value. That takes us through our first 10 cryptocurrencies. I've got another 42 to go through. So make sure you hit the subscribe button down below, bell notification icon, like the video up. Uh, follow me on Instagram, Twitter. I'll let you know when more of that's coming out. I've got, like I said, 40 to go through. So make sure you reference back to this video if you want to know what it is I'm talking about. I won't recap it all again. We'll just get straight into the next 42 videos and I'll reference back to this video. So I hope you enjoyed that. Let me know in the comments down below any of your thoughts, suggestions. I am getting back to you guys as much as possible. I'll see you on Instagram and Twitter. Newsletter is coming out this week, so if you want a free newsletter, drop your email address down below. The Investor Accelerator staking pool is down below, and also the Investor Accelerator membership course. You can get your membership to that. There's a link to it down below, so you can learn how to trade and set your own investment plans up as well. See you at the next video. Until then, have more fun to get more done.